So our next topic, at first glance, will appear to have little or nothing to do with what we've just been talking about, but there's actually a connection, as you'll see. We may or may not get to it this morning, but we'll certainly get to it next week, or next, next Wednesday, two days from now. Um, and you'll see how it all kind of fits together. This example is also important because assignment 3A, which will come out probably soon, but you won't have to be responsible for doing it until after break, is something that will use the features we're about to talk about. So we're going to talk about something called the Java Executor Completion Service. And I'll explain to you the, big, the building blocks for the Executor Completion Service, which is the completion service interface. And I'll explain how it works with a bunch of other interfaces and classes and so on in order to be able to provide a framework to handle the completion of asynchronous tasks in a very clever way. And I'll also give you a simple example of how to instantiate an instance of the Executor Completion Service. So if you think back to the executor service, remember executor service is what you used for assignment 2A and, and also for assignment 2B, of course, to implement the means by which the beings were set into motion to do the gazing into the Palantir. And one of the things that was a little bit frustrating with that example, if you looked at it carefully, was it gave you back futures for each submission and you ended up having to have a way to iterate through the list of futures waiting for each future to finish. And if you look very carefully at the implementation, there's a call to future get. Your code probably doesn't look quite like this because I'm using a very clever technique called exception laundering that I'll show you when I go over my solution. But be, it, be that as it may, we're iterating through the list of futures. And for each future, we're going to get the result. And the problem with calling get, leaving aside the fact that we have to deal with exceptions, the problem with calling get is that get will block if the computation associated with that future isn't done yet. And the problem is that sometimes futures end up completing in different orders than they were initi initiated. So for example, if you're going to compute you know, n numbers to see if they're prime or not, if a number is a prime number, that computation takes a heck of a lot longer to compute, typically, than if the number is not a prime number. Because if you, for example, if it's an even number, you can almost instantly figure out it's divisible by 2, right? So boom, you're done. But if it's a prime number, it's going to take a long time to run. So you might turn out doing like, you know, non-prime, 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 prime. And then if for some reason, uh, or maybe a better example, you say, you know, Prime number first, then non-prime, then non-prime, then non-prime. Remember, these numbers could be generated randomly. But in your list of futures, the very first future you're going to go and call get on could have been the prime number one. So that's going to take forever to compute. And all the other ones have already finished. So wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to wait for in a, in a given order that might turn out to be the wrong order or the most non-optimal order? And this blocking problem is very common with the so-called synchronous future processing model. And that's one where you block synchronously waiting for the results of asynchronous operations to complete. So that's what's called synchronous future processing. And that's pretty much what you get out of the box when you use the executor service to submit the results. You get these futures back, and then you have the synchronous future blocking problem. So how are we going to fix this problem? We're going to use the executor completion service, which is an implementation of the completion service interface. And we're going to use that to use so-called asynchronous future processing. And what will happen here, and we'll look at this later, you submit a bunch of tasks. Those tasks run in pools of threads. And as things complete, they get stuck onto something called a completion queue. And then the caller, the client for this whole thing, can pull stuff off the completion queue in the order they complete rather than the order in which the futures were recorded when you initiated the asynchronous operations in the first place. So that makes us potentially more responsive as a client. So completion service is an interface. As you can see, it's, it's got a very simple interface. It's basically got you know, submit, take, poll, and a couple of versions of poll. A completion service is an interface implemented by various things. There's a default implementation that's called the executor completion service. So by default, 
that's what you could use. You could make your own if you wanted to, but the, the one that comes out of the box works quite well. The completion service is a class that under the hood is associated with an instance of an executor service. So as a consequence, it can have a pool of threads that will actually do the asynchronous processing concurrently. And then it also uh, has this thing uh, we'll talk about it called a queuing future. So the executor is used to execute tasks in a pool of threads. As the tasks complete, they are stuck into a blocking queue. So if the queue is empty, you have to wait. And there's something called a queuing future, which extends another class we mentioned briefly called a future task. And this is used to track when an asynchronous task is done so you can plop it into the queue. So that's the moving part. So you can see at first glance, there's a bunch of moving parts here, right? We've got, you know, an executor completion service, which is kind of the, the manager of everything. We've got an executor service to run things concurrently. We've got a blocking queue to keep track of the results. And we've got this thing called a queuing future, which is used to know when something's done and stick it on the queue. The actual design architecture of this thing is an implementation of a, of a pattern from the POSA 2 book, which is a book I wrote about 20 years ago. And so you can go on Wikipedia and read about the proactor pattern. Basically, this pattern allows you to handle the results of asynchronous operations, um, which are triggered when the operation's complete. So it's, it's a cool pattern. It's a little bit convoluted to understand. But once you understand the executor completion service, you're like, oh, wow, that's basically an implementation of that pattern. There's a bunch of other implementations of that pattern that are, are well-known and widely used, such as I.O. completion ports, which is something that's available in Windows, and uh, other mechanisms that you'll find in various frameworks. Here's how you actually create an instance of the executor completion service. So basically what happens is you go ahead and write some code that first makes an executor service implementation, which could be a fixed thread pool as we do here. It could be a cache thread pool. It could be a fork join pool. It could be whatever type of executor you, implementation you'd like. In this example, we're just using a fixed thread pool just to show something that's concrete. And then you go ahead and you make yourself an executor completion service instance, associating it with whatever executor you just created. So in this case, we made a thread pool executor, but we could have made some other kind of executor if we'd wanted to. Once you've got that, then as we'll see as we go through the next couple slides, you can submit tasks to the executor completion service, which then uses the executor service or the executor that you just created in order to run them in the background. And then the results are returned through the blocking queue so that clients can pick those results up in the order that they complete, which is the real secret sauce of this whole thing.